Hurricane Dorian is approaching the Space Coast, and today we're taking a look at what NASA and SpaceX are doing to prepare. Coming up. Hey guys, Tori here from Overlook Horizon. If you're new to the channel, we fly high altitude weather balloon flights to the edge of space and back, and along the way, we talk about space, science, and technology. So if that's something you're interested in, consider subscribing. Today, we're talking about Hurricane Dorian, which is the fourth named tropical storm as part of the 2019 Atlantic hurricane season. It's currently classified as a category one hurricane, but it's expected to reach category four status before it makes landfall with wind speeds of over 130 miles per hour. Four Florida is no stranger to hurricanes, with 40% of all U.S. hurricanes since 1851 directly hitting the Sunshine State. Now, this can be good and bad. Obviously, if you're in the path of an oncoming hurricane, it's no picnic. But fortunately, Florida is one of the most well-prepared states when it comes to hurricane readiness, and the Space Coast is no exception to that. According to NASA, most of their buildings can withstand at least a Category 3 hurricane with wind speeds up to 125 miles per hour. This mostly applies to the older buildings that were built in the 60s and 70s, though, because that's what the building codes were during the time. That would be things like NASA's iconic Vehicle Assembly Building or the Space Shuttle Orbiter Processing Facility, which now houses the Air Force's X-37B space plane and Boeing's CST-100 Starliner. Now, the United Launch Alliance facilities have a bit of a mixture when it comes to structural load design. The vertical integration facility as well as the crew access tower over at launch pad 41 are both designed to withstand wind speeds up to 135 miles per hour. Meanwhile, some of their other facilities like the mobile service tower over at launch pad 37 are designed to handle higher wind speeds at up to 140 miles per hour. The newest buildings though, like the Kennedy Space Center headquarters, the launch control center, or SpaceX's horizontal integration facilities are all designed up to category 5 hurricanes with wind speeds of 157 miles per hour or higher. Now that all sounds pretty good, but it's no guarantee. In fact, back in 2004, NASA's iconic vehicle assembly building actually suffered some damage to the exterior when a pair of hurricanes hit back to back just three weeks apart, with the strongest one being a category three. So NASA really isn't one to take chances when it comes to hurricanes. Just this past Friday, they started moving the mobile launch platform back to the vehicle assembly building to get undercover. Now the mobile launch platform is intended to support the SLS rocket rocket in future missions, and it was out at launch pad 39B for some fit testing. And they had to start the movement of that pretty early because although it's only 4.2 miles from the launch pad to the vehicle assembly building, that crawler can only top out at a max speed of about one to two miles per hour, so it can take five to eight hours for that whole thing to make the entire trip back to the vehicle assembly building. The newest addition though for hurricane preparations over on the Space Coast is SpaceX's Starship prototype build site. That build site is is over in Coco, and to date, everything that we've seen has been completely outside and exposed to everything that Mother Nature has to offer. SpaceX is no rookie, though, when it comes to hurricane preparations. In fact, back in 2017, SpaceX launched the Air Force's mysterious X-37B space plane on its fifth classified mission. After the launch, SpaceX subsequently landed its first stage Falcon 9 booster back at LZ-1 at Cape Canaveral. And all of this happened just three days prior to the incoming Hurricane Irma. Now, actually, when you think about it, SpaceX's Starship prototype build sites are actually both in danger when it comes to hurricanes. 80% of all U.S. hurricanes since 1851 have had a direct hit on either Florida or Texas. So, with the Mark II Starship prototype over at Cape Canaveral and staring Hurricane Dorian right in the eye, we could someday see another hurricane threatening Boca Chica, Texas, where the Mark I Starship is. Now, SpaceX, as well as NASA, United Launch Alliance, the U.S. Air Force, have all been spending the last couple of days preparing for the incoming hurricane. NASA has to protect assets like the Orion capsule that's indoors inside a hangar type facility, and so they're placing sandbags around the door frames to make sure no water gets in. For SpaceX, though, it seems like it might be pretty challenging to try to secure that Starship prototype build site. With everything being outside, it seems like everything needs to be tied down and secured, and you can't help think about our old pal, the Starhopper. You see, the Starhopper went through similar preparations for a much smaller storm just earlier this year. SpaceX was preparing for some severe weather incoming to Boca Chica, Texas, and had to secure the Starhopper's base as well as the nose cone. Sadly, though, some 50 mile per hour winds actually broke the nose cone free from its moorings and damaged that nose cone. SpaceX ultimately decided not to repair the nose cone and just fly the Starhopper like it is, and that's how we got the iconic look of that awkward but lovable flying water 
tower. Over the next couple of days, we're all going to have to ride it all out and see what comes of Hurricane Dorian. Meanwhile, the National Weather Service will be hard at work launching weather balloons, and NOAA's hurricane hunters will be launching drop sons directly into the hurricane so that they can collect detailed data and provide that to as many people as possible so everyone is fully prepared. So, question of the day, how are you guys feeling about this incoming storm? Do you think the Starship prototype is safe? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And if you like this kind of content, please like the video and consider subscribing. We got more to come. Finally, if you're in Florida or in the path of Hurricane Dorian, please be safe. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you in the next video.